And there are new opportunities for farmers like me to earn money in the form of the Environmental Land Management Scheme, or ELMS for short. Under this new scheme, as well as getting paid for growing food, the proposal is that farmers could also receive money for helping the environment. But what does this actually mean in practice? To find out, I've driven just down the road from me to Chipping Norton to meet Ian Wilkinson. Ian runs a small, not-for-profit farm, looking into ways we might have to farm in the future. As well as educating farmers like me about how to introduce policies like elms into their farming systems. Ian, this is a beautiful spot you've got here, but looks very different to where I farm. Well, I, yeah, this bit of it is, but if you look over there and behind us on the rest of the farm, there's a lot of food being grown, but with a bit of a difference. <laughs> Ian has farmed here for eight years. And one of the very first things he did was to create this natural lake to help with flood management. And is this what the environmental land management schemes are going to do? Are they going to pay farmers for producing this sort of thing? This is part of a suite of options that farmers like us will have to choose from. And this natural flood management scheme is one of those options. And with this system here, what you're doing is stopping flooding, I assume? Yeah, absolutely. The water actually comes up in springs at the top of the farm and runs down the farm. Now, in previous generations, we pushed the water straight off the farm into the River Evenload and then off to London to 15 million people. And it does get the water off the farm quickly. But flooding is a big risk for so many people now living downstream of upland area farms. And we realised, actually, that there was potential for a natural flood management scheme. We've created a series of ponds and dams that slows the water flow down. And that's the sort of things that Elms will be looking at on a landscape scale. So water retention, but what other things are we likely to get paid for with Elms? Well, no question. We're going to get paid for habitats, for, for example, for tree planting. I think we've planted 12,000 trees. We don't cut the hedges very frequently, so there's loads of berries for the birds, loads of places to nest. Really important, and Elms will incentivise us to do that. But this is non-productive, so farmers have got to get something for it. Absolutely. We can't sell this, can we? So the government's incentivising us to do things for public good. That's exactly what Elms is for. I mean, it sounds exciting and very worthwhile, but I went to agricultural college to learn how to produce food. Are we still going to do that as farmers? Uh, yeah, me too. I mean, I, I'm like you. I mean, we've come through the same thing. I'm like, yield, yield, yield was what it was all about. Well, look, we're in a different era now, as you know, only too well. It's all about climate change and biodiversity, but we still have mouths to feed. Let's go and have a look at some food production. All right, brilliant. OK. At 107 acres, Ian's farm is relatively small compared to ours. But he's got lots of schemes on the go that give us a glimpse of what future farming might involve. At home, I'm growing huge monocultures, while Ian's farm has plenty of variety. Different crops, woodland and grazing all sit together tightly, complementing each other. And where I'm spending thousands trying to maximise yields, Ian's working with nature to get results at a fraction of the cost. I want to know how he does it. Oh, it looks like a crop of wheat in here, Ian. Yeah, you feel you're a bit happier now, Adam, <laughs> I should think. So how do you grow this that's different to the way I do it? Well, this is very simply different. It's a population of wheat, massive numbers of different types of wheat, not just one dwarf one like yours, but loads of different ones. And there's no pesticides and there's no fertilisers. So that says to me, lower yield, how are you making any money? Ha, well, it is a little bit lower yielding, yes, but it commands a higher price, and we're not spending any money at all to grow it. There's no inputs, no cost, but come and have a look at this. This makes a huge difference. So this is where we're building the fertility to grow that wheat crop. This is some I dug up earlier on for you to have a look at. So this soil is growing uh, a mixture of different plants. So this is a, uh, a deep-rooting crop that goes before the wheat to build fertility and structure into the soil. So this is getting the carbon out of the atmosphere into the soil, and that's what feeds that wheat crop. But presumably this has to be down for what? Four years? Four years. So that is a cost to that, isn't there? 
Well, there is, but don't forget we're getting, we're getting products back, we're getting livestock products back. There's no cost of production. And of course, this is where Elms comes in because we're going to be incentivized to grow this sort of crop. Ian's wheat might yield less than half of my crop, but with much lower overheads, plus potential annual Elms payments from the carbon locking lay, his margins are far greater than mine. And the way we grow crops at home, I like to think we do it very efficiently, we've got all the technology, but we're still struggling to make any money out of it. And it seems to me this could be the tipping point in agriculture. We'll be able to produce food, but we'll also get incentivized to look after the environment and suck carbon into the soil and therefore hopefully help save the planet. Well, uh, yeah, you, you put it very grandly, Adam, but I think fundamentally you're right. This is a different way of thinking about the farming system. Just imagine what that valley could look like in 20 years' time if this sort of thing takes off. You can have big farms, small farms, all growing a massive diversity of crops. Wouldn't that be an amazing scene to see over there? How exciting would that be? It does seem to me that, you know, me and many of my fellow farmers have been farming in the same way now for decades. And change is afoot. We need to change our mindset and the way we think about our land use. Quite exciting. It is exciting, yeah.